The Otago Goldfields must be about the most reluctantly acknowledged strikes in the history of gold discoveries. There were numerous reports of gold being found before the famous 1861 confirmation by Gabriel Reed of gold in Tuapeka in abundance that finally sparked a rush. Māori recognised the precious metal as soon as they saw it being used on the Pākehā's gold watches. The whaler Edwin Palmer, for instance, was told by Kaitahu Ariki to Hawaii that there was plenty of gold to be found on the banks of the Mata'au River, the mighty Clutha. Another pioneer heard the same story from Chief Raki Raki and even mounted an expedition all the way up here to Beaumont in 1852 to try and find some. But when it comes to gold prospecting, you've really got to know what you're doing. And these first prospectors in Otago simply didn't. Edward Peters proved more skillful. This Indian pioneer from Bombay, now Mumbai, fossicked successfully for gold at Woolshed Creek and Tuapeka while working on a sheep run nearby. He sold his gold to storekeepers and made no secret of his discoveries. But no rush followed. Scientific confirmation of Otago's golden prospects came with the work of the early surveyors. Charles Ligar, an early surveyor general, made a tour of the southern districts in 1856. He found gold here in the Matola River near Tuturo and reported to the Otago authorities the likely presence of a remunerative gold field in the district. Otago's own surveyor, John Turnbull Thompson, confirmed those traces the following year. But it was his assistant, Alexander Garvey, who really set the seal on these geological assessments. He found firm evidence of gold scattered across the province's streams and rivers at Manuherakea, Tuapeka, Waitahuna, Pomahaka, and in the Clutha River. In other words, all the places where huge gold strikes would subsequently be made. And it wasn't as if this information was kept secret. It was all there in the survey reports published in the Otago Provincial Gazette in September 1858. So what was the holdup? If gold was definitely known to be around Otago's inland streams and rivers, why wasn't there a mad rush to the interior by the pioneers to try and make their fortunes? Well, Otago's founder, Captain William Cargill, set the tone during his tenure as Otago's first provincial superintendent. He was not at all keen for the orderly settlement of pious Scottish Presbyterians he had spent years bringing into being to be thrown into disarray by a mad rush for gold. He made it his business to quietly discourage any focus on the precious metal. Otago's route to prosperity would be via farming. As Dunedin's main newspaper had editorialised in 1851 in response to one of the earliest reports of gold being found, flour is more necessary than gold and may be more profitable. And to be fair, by the late 1850s, both grain and wool returns were beginning to rise dramatically. Otago was doing just fine. No gold rush was required here, thanks very much.